Welcome, friends. Welcome back to Cocktails After Dark. Uh, today we're going to do a daiquiri because so far we haven't really done too many rum cocktails. And the reason I chose a daiquiri is because these little limes uh, showed up in the grocery store. These, uh, if you live in the United States, you would call them a key lime. Um, if you live in Asia, you would just call them a lime because that's, that is the lime that's everywhere. They also go by the name of bartender lime. Um, West Indian lime, Mexican lime, they go by a bunch of different names. Um, and up until the mid-1920s, this lime was the one that was behind every bar um, and was available in every grocery store nonstop. Then in the 1920s into the 1930s, we started to see a shift away from this lime, which is, uh, I think, an incredible flavorful lime, to the lime that we all know today that has... Um, that's taken over, it's called a Persian lime. Even though it was bred and developed in California, um, it is a cross, this lime is a cross between a lemon and a key lime. Um, it gets kind of complicated. I find citrus to be fascinating, the way that they crossbreed them and they get completely different things. Anyway, so in the 1930s um, in Cuba, where the daiquiri was invented, this would be the lime. The bartender lime or the key lime or the West Indian lime. That would be the lime that's called for in the drink. So I started looking through old cocktail books. And I started looking at um, recipes from the Havana nightclubs that issued cocktail books to their patrons. And so you'd go to the bar, you'd spend your money, you'd, um, you'd play at the tables because there were lots of casinos. You'd drink a lot um, and then you would take home a souvenir cocktail book. And so I looked at ones from uh, Bar La Florida, and there's four different daiquiris in this one. And it calls for something called Limon Verde, which, or Verde, uh, my Spanish is horrible, which is probably this. Although in the English translation, it says lemon. So I'm not really too sure. Um, I looked at a bunch of other ones, and they all have sort of the same proportions. But the one I want to do is from the Sloppy Joe's cocktail book. And the 1932 Sloppy Joe's cocktail book calls for a teaspoon of sugar, one part of rum, and the juice of a lemon. Um, and that stays the same through like 1933, 34, 35. By the time you get to 1938, uh, it calls for a teaspoon of sugar, two ounces of rum, and the juice of a lime. So that's the one we're going to make. Um, we're going to give it a try. We're going to see what happens. And for daiquiris, I've seen formulas that are all over the map. Generally, they ask for a Cuban-style rum. So in the 1930s, Bacardi would have been the de facto Cuban-style rum, even though uh, some of these places had their own uh, house rums um, made specifically for their bar with their own labels. Sloppy Joe's had their own rum. And, and because this is no longer made in Cuba, I'm going to try an actual Cuban rum. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to see what happens, um, and then we're going to come to a conclusion of sorts, perhaps. Now... Let's start. Um, into the shaker, super fine sugar, one spoonful. We're gonna do two ounces of Bacardi rum. I once did an ad for Bacardi rum, um, probably 20 years ago at this point. And I gotta tell you, it was a nightmare. I'll play it um, up here in the corner somewhere. You can see, it was a nightmare. It was like three and a half or four days of shooting in a water pumping plant um, in Scarborough, just outside of Toronto or at the edge of Toronto. It was a nightmare, absolute nightmare. We turned this giant water pumping station from the city of Toronto into a nightclub. Um, and we got free rum at the end. Um, they paid us, I got paid, but I also got a couple of bottles of free rum. And one of those bottles of free rum um, was still in our uh, liquor cabinet unopened 15 years later and I just I ended up throwing it out because I just don't really like Bacardi rum but I hang out fairly often with the uh, Bacardi rep for for Ontario and uh, he suggested I try this one so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna give that a go so that's the juice of one lime um, the sugars in there the lime is in there the rum is in there let's get in with some ice cracked ice and we'll give that a shake. Take the ice out of this glass. 
And this gets a double strain. And now exactly the same with the Cuban rum. So, bar spoon of superfine sugar. Very inexact amount. Two ounces of rum. And this is the uh, this is the Cuban rum that if you visit Cuba and you hang out there now, that's the one you're going to see everywhere. Um, or at least the last time I was in Cuba, that's the one I saw everywhere. So a little bit of roll on the lime. These little limes, they don't take much. You can just squeeze them between your fingers, and you'll get uh, most of the juice out. And I'm going to strain out the seeds, because there are a lot of seeds. And again, uh, the juice of a lime, pretty inexact. And it depends on what lime you're going to use as well. I mean, I'm using these little limes. You probably get a little bit more juice out of those, even though they don't juice as nicely. So that is a factor that uh, could really screw this up. But there we go. Okay, lime, and some cracked ice for shaking. Okay, take the ice out of the glass. Double strain. And here we have two versions of the 1938 daiquiri from Sloppy Joe's Bar in Havana, Cuba. And we've used two different types of Cuban rum. So let's give them a try. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try the Cubay first. Uh, it has a different color because the rum is a little bit darker. It's got a little bit of a yellow tinge. Um, on the nose, it's quite nice. Uh, it is quite nice. Bracing. Does, does that make sense? Bracing. Um, it is very rum forward because rum is the, the biggest thing in there. There is a touch of sweetness from the sugar, which is quite nice. And I really like that lime flavor. So let's try the Bacardi. I'm not a fan of Bacardi, so I'm interested to see what happens. On the nose, it's pretty much the same. Very close, very, very close, but just by a hair, the Cube wins. Um, there's something, there's something at the end uh, that I don't like that is a little bit jarring. You know, you, you've got something in your, you're drinking it and it's very pleasant and then there's something that just sort of grabs you at the end and you go, oh no, that, that wasn't nice at all. Yeah, I'm gonna try the Cube again. This is the problem with trying cocktails. Just by a hair, the Cube. So is it the perfect daiquiri? Probably not. Um, I think this is one where you could spend a very long time tweaking the ingredients to get it perfect. And of course, the different lime that you use, or whether you use a lemon, is going to change the flavor profile considerably. Um, how much juice you can get from a lime is going to change the uh, flavor profile considerably. So it probably would be best, if you started to do this at home, um, to measure exactly how much lime juice you're putting in and play with it, and play with different rums. I mean, I've got a bunch of other white rums that I could try it with. So there's a whole pile of different rum profiles that you could play with to make this work. Um, you don't have to stick to Cuban rum, I don't think. I mean, if you want to be a stickler and you do it exactly the same way, uh, sure. But I think there's a lot of different flavor profiles by changing out the spirit. So, in the comments below, tell me your favorite rum for a daiquiri. What rum do you use in a daiquiri? Do you use key limes? Do you use Persian limes? Do you use lemons? 
how do you make your daiquiri? Do you use sugar like I use sugar or do you put in simple syrup? Um, and some of these recipes put in things like grenadine, curacao, um, maraschino, maraschino. There's a whole bunch of other things that they put in to sort of round out the flavor. But I kind of like this in its purest form. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.